Greetings, sisters and brothers in Christ. This weekend, we celebrate the fourth weekend of Easter. Remember, Easter is not just a day. It's a season of seven weeks. And this week is known as Good Shepherd Weekend. And so we begin our worship in the name of God who created us, Jesus Christ who redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who comforts and sustains us. Amen. Uh, so our first reading, or I should actually say our psalm for Good Shepherd Sunday is the 23rd Psalm. Pray it with me if you know it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And the gospel for this um, Good Shepherd weekend is according to St. John, the 10th chapter, verses 1 through 10. Very truly, I tell you, Jesus said, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. When he, um, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to their voice. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And so the title of our message on this Good Shepherd weekend is from the gospel, and it is the gate to abundant life. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So sisters and brothers, I really wanted to film this um, message by a gate, but it's pouring out. So um, 
Instead, I share with you this beautiful photograph that I took when I was in Hilo, Hawaii, of a gorgeous tree. And you know I, um, I wear the tree of life around my neck. So this makes me this tree, which is huge and abundant, makes me think of, of Christ, that gate to abundant life. This tree reminds me of abundant life. So that's our theme for today. Um, there are seven places in this Gospel of John where Jesus says, I am. And Bible scholars say that in this uh, gospel, this fourth gospel, um, it begins by saying in John 1, 1, in the beginning, and that's to take us back to the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible, which also says in the beginning. Um, and so in the book of John, this fourth gospel, it says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. All came in, things came into being in him and what came into being in him was life, okay? And so Bible scholars say what this fourth gospel is trying to do is to show us that yes, there was God who created the cosmos, which Genesis 1 speaks of, but that in this Jesus Christ, there is a completely new creation that's possible for all of us. And so it echoes the book of Genesis in the beginning, and but it shows us that it's a new kind of beginning, a spiritual new beginning. Of the beginning of new and abundant life in Christ. So in this gospel, Jesus performs seven miracles or seven signs. John uses the word sign instead of miracle. And signs are to point to who this Jesus is. Remember, seven is the biblical number of perfection, completion, wholeness. And on uh, seven occasions in this gospel, Jesus uses the great I am saying. I am the bread of life. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And in today's gospel, I am the gate. I am the gate or the door today at Church Beyond the Walls. I read it in English and Spanish, in Spanish, la puerta, the door, the doorway, the gate. Um, and so um, that is an interesting image for Jesus. I am the gate but I'd like us to think about it as the gate or the door to abundant life. Um, this week, um, some of the students here at the university had a midweek mass and um, what they do there is they, they share from their hearts what the gospel, they talk about the gospel for the coming weekend, which is this weekend, which is this gospel. And they speak about what it means to them. And there was one particular student who was really struck by this image of Jesus as the gate, the door, okay? And we might say the gate to abundant life. So at Church Beyond the Walls today, I asked people, what do you think it means to say Jesus is the gate or the door? And they talked about a door or a gate as being like an entryway to this abundant life that Jesus um, invites all of us to this day. Now, what would it look like in your life 
for you to really be living that abundant life? What would your life look like? Think about that for a moment. What would it look like for you to be like this tree, fully alive and thriving and living in that abundant life? And then ask yourself another question. Because in this gospel where Jesus is, he is the gate. And he came in order that you might have life and have it abundantly. He's the gate, the door, the entryway for you to abundant life. But then Jesus many, many times talks about how there are others in this life who are thieves or bandits who came only to do harm, to kill, to destroy, to harm. And he contrasts himself with these thieves and bandits. So first thing for you to think about with regard to your own life is what would it look like for you to go through that door, go through that gate, enter into this way of abundant life? What would your life look like if you were living fully and abundantly? But secondly, second thing for you to ponder is, who are the thieves and the bandits who are in your life? What are those things or um, relationships or um, struggles you are experiencing right now in your life that are robbing you? that are threatening you, that are not letting you live this full and abundant life that Jesus is inviting you to. And so, um, I think of the, the great Catholic um, monk, Thomas Merton, who said, if you really want to know who I am, don't ask me where I live or what I do for a living or how I part my hair, he said. Ask me what I'm living for and ask me what obstacles are preventing me from living for that. So in other words, again, what is the abundant life Christ is inviting you to, what would that look like for you? And then what is what are those obstacles? What are those thieves or bandits that are um, preventing you from living this full and abundant life that Christ desires for you? So, again, Jesus says to us, to you, this day in the fourth week, the very minute, middle of this Easter season, he says, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. May we all live in that abundant life that Jesus, the gate, the doorway, invites us to walk through, to enter. Amen. And now may God bless us and keep us. May God's face shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May God look upon us with blessing and grant us peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.